the definition of a limit of a sequence you have your sequence terms it has a limit L written in the usual limit notation if SN the limit the uh, terms of the sequence are as close to L as we want whenever n is sufficiently large. In other words, as the n gets larger and larger and larger, if the sequence limits out to a value, then that is the limit. And if the limit exists, then the sequence converges and it converges to that limit. If no limit exists, we say this sequence diverges. Now we have some rules here. The sequence x to the n converges to zero if x in absolute value is less than one. In other words, if the size of it is less than one and diverges if x is greater than one. Also, the sequence Sn is 1 over n to a power converges to 0 if p is greater than 0. So let's see examples of those. Uh, first example, the sequence is 2 thirds to the n. So 2 thirds is definitely an absolute value less than 1, so this should converge to 0. So let's see, mathematically, you have your limit statement of the sequence. You can rewrite that as 1 over 3 halves to the n. And 3 halves to the n, 3 halves being bigger than 1, that will blow up and go to infinity in the denominator, which means the entire fraction tends to 0. So 2 thirds to the n converges. And over here is your graph. Notice that this is a function of x. F function of x equals two-thirds to the x. So we can just go ahead and graph it and we get this curve here. Comes down here like this. You know. And if you just consider the integer values which are represented by these red dots then you see that those dots tend toward zero, limits out. The same way that two-thirds of the x limits out to zero. Now, technically speaking, when we say the limit of two-thirds of the n equals zero, what it really means is that given any small epsilon but greater than zero, we can find an m such that if your n counter is beyond the m or equal to the m, then your two-thirds of the n will be epsilon close to the limit, which happens to be zero. Very similar to the epsilon delta definition of limit. So, for example, let's say we gave epsilon equals 0 0.001. So we need to find an m such that if our counter subscript n is greater than or equal to the m or beyond it, then we should say greater than or equal to there. Then your two-thirds of the n is going to be 0 0.001 close to the limit, which is zero. So that means that two-thirds of the n minus zero is two-thirds of the n. That has to be less than 0 0.001. So let's go ahead and find that m value. So we're just going to set two-thirds of the m equal to the 0 0.001 and solve it. And you go through these log steps of solving. And sure enough, you get this expression, which is approximately equal to 17.04. So your m has to be safe, so you go up to the next integer value, 18. And you check it. 
sure enough, two thirds to the 18 gets you to 0 0.00068, which is under 0 0.001. So any n greater than or equal to 18 will make the sequence term less than 0 0.001. And that could have been done, that same procedure, with any epsilon we picked and uh, anything greater than zero and that would have shown that the limit really is going to zero. Here's another example. We have here uh, this particular limit here. Um, 1 plus 1 over n plus 1 to the n plus 1 that limits out to e as we've seen so that means that the sequence converges also negative 1 to the n this sequence here that diverges because when you go through the sequence terms they flip-flop between negative 1 to 1 and negative 1 to 1 negative one, they're never going to converge. They're just going to go back and forth uh, between, here's negative one, here's one. They're going to go back and forth between negative one, one, negative one, one. So that's another way a sequence can diverge. Not just going to infinity or negative infinity, but diverging because it just repeats between values. Uh, here's another example. To the n, that diverges in the way that it blows up. 2, 4, 8, for n equals 3, 16. It's going to infinity. And we also have one like this. Sn is this algebraic fraction. So we already know from rational functions in uh, pre-calculus that as n gets large just the front running terms of the highest hours are going to affect the limit definite uh, destination so it looks like it's going to go to three-fifths. Three-fifths here. So let's plot it. I put it into uh, y equals and sure enough the curve does come down here and limit out to three-fifths but mathematically we can also show that by factoring out an n squared out of the numerator and factoring out an n squared out of the denominator and you get this outcome here here and here and then in the limit notation, as n goes to infinity, larger and larger, this part down here, this one goes to zero, because n squared goes to infinity. One over n goes to zero, so the whole thing is gonna go to um, zero plus three over five minus zero, because the n squares will cancel out because n is not zero, n is going to infinity, so you get three-fifths. So that sequence, converges.